Boxing King Media, powered by BYD, Mr. Gareth A. Davis. We're finally here, Gareth, and it's 1 a.m. And I love the dedication that you're still out there grafting at 1 a.m. Well, you see that laptop up there? I'm sitting there. I've got two more pieces to write tonight. I'll probably be up till about three and then. Well, I'm going to talk about the uh, fight in a moment. Uh, uh, I, I think, like always, the listeners love uh, your questions. There's not many this week, but there's more like. They're more like what? There's more. They're more what? Like, well, they're more like statements this week. Go on, then read out the statements. Right, okay. So, well, this first one is kind of a question. Uh, saying, is Gareth the kind of person who uses body scrub on his face? <laughs> um, no. No? You don't, you never oh, I just shave and put a bit of Nivea cream on. I'm very basic perfumes, but um, I don't do a lot of... Um, Man care. I I I do. I I like a pedicure these days. All right. Soaking the feet and getting your nails done and all of that. That's really good. Really. And all and all sportsmen have it now. You know, um, looking after your feet. We spend a lot of the time on our feet, and uh, it's an important thing to do. But that's about it, really. And uh, and and the hair cut by my uh, Japanese hairdresser every six weeks. That's about it, really. I dread to imagine what's going to come next when they find out that Gareth has a, a, a regular pedicure. Um, one here, a quick question. How does it feel when you get really bad questions and very rude ones? How does it feel, Gareth? Well, it's, I mean, I, I never get it in public, so um, I don't... I just think it's it's that hater syndrome, isn't it, online? I, I, how do I feel? How do I feel? I mean, I just take it with a pinch of salt. Um, I think people react and act in comment bo- on comment boards and uh, on social media like they don't act in real life, as you know. So I don't take it as, as real um, because I don't find the public are like that. I think the public are very appreciative of one's work. But it, it, doesn't, it doesn't bother me. It probably spurs me on to, uh, to do more, stay longer, work harder, go faster. Yeah, and I think they enjoy listening to you as well. Um, Gareth is the type of guy who religiously gives his hair a deep conditioning treatment every Sunday night. No, I don't, actually. I don't condition my hair. I only wash it, but I use Moroccan oil shampoo. From Is it from Morocco or is it just called Moroccan oil? No, it's the brand Moroccan oil. It's made out of Moroccan oil that comes out of a nut. I mean, I, I don't know whether you wash your beard in a, in a nice shampoo, but... Obviously, you're you're shaving on top, so you don't probably don't worry about your shampoo too much. Definitely not. Um, somebody's saying vaping is such a chav behaviour. They are right, and I really ought to stop vaping. It's so chavish of me to do it. I will try and behave myself in future, but I am having a lovely little Kuruba elderflower sugar-free Red Bull with uh, with a little bit of Patron Silver tequila in it right now. Right. That's the reason why he's awake at 1 a.m. Um, <laughs> right. Let's let's talk about the, the fights, Gareth. This Saturday, Derek Chisora, Joe Joyce. As this fight's got closer, I remember when it was announced, almost everybody was saying, oh, what are they doing? What, why is Chisora fighting Joyce? It shouldn't be happening. But now, a lot of people are picking Derek Chisora to win. Um, so, yeah. Have you seen the tide changing? And... Could, is it an upset if Derek wins? Yeah, it is an upset. It's a lose-lose for Joe Joyce, this fight. I expect him to win handily, and he ought to win handily by points or stoppage. Um, I think he'll get to Derek eventually. But Joe's 39 in uh, in September. Derek's already 40. Um, I know people groaned a bit when this fight was first announced, but there's jeopardy here for Joe Joyce. If he, if he wants to get back in the big time, which he was a couple of years ago before the two losses to Zhili Zhang. Think of the knockout of Joseph Parker. You think of how he dismantled Daniel Dubois with jabs and made him genuflect and surrender on one knee that night um, with a broken orbital socket. Look where those two are now, Dubois and Parker, frankly, both in the top six in the world, one defending a world title. A lot of people saying that Joseph Parker should be uh, getting a world title shot, which he probably will get soon. Dubois, I say, defending the IBF against Anthony Joshua in a, in a monumental event, Riyadh season edition, uh, Wembley Stadium on September the 21st. So there's a lot on the line for Joe Joyce and he's got to win this fight and the optics need to look good for him because he he, he laboured to victory over Cash Alley in his comeback fight after the two losses 
to Gilet Zhang. And I think unless he wants to be in that group of fighters who are being pitched against Fabio Wardley, Fraser Clark, even Moza Tauma, guys coming up uh, through the ranks, if you like, trying to make their way into the top echelons of the heavyweight division, he's got to look very powerful against Derek Chisora. What um what what do you make of you know like you just said there the Joe Joyce against Cash Ali? In your opinion, from the boxing you've watched over the years, is that a guy that's on his way out, or was that a guy that just took it lightly? He took it cautiously. I think he was cautious in that fight. He um, I'd like to see him go for broke, which is what he's got to do against Derek Chisora. Um, it's interesting that a lot of people are picking Derek, but Derek always looks confident going into these fights. What Joe's got to do is put it on him. I know that sounds simple and, and oversimplified, if you like, but he's got to get out there and be strong against him and watch that overhand right from Derek, keep him at distance, not let him bury his head on his chest and and work away behind that peek peekaboo style of his. Just hit him long, hit him hard um, and dominate him. I don't think Derek's got uh, a lot left. I mean, it's how much he's got left and how much Joe can show he's got left. Because Joe, as I say, at 39 in September, he's got to make the most of these opportunities. You know, if he does a good job on Derek, no one can question um, that, he's, that he's basically back on the horse, if you like. But he didn't look good against Gili Zhang, but Gili Zhang is a difficult fighter to go up against. Look what he did for six rounds against Joseph Parker. Uh, out in Saudi Arabia. He looked like he had the beating of Joseph Parker. Um, but he's got, he can't sit back in this, Joe. He can't rely on on on, on wearing Chisora down for too long. It's 12 three-minute rounds, and I want him to try and get the job done uh, before 10 in this fight. And I think he will get a late stoppage. That's what I'm going for, points or late stoppage. The the face-off between them was, is almost iconic. You had a, you've got a guy that, you know, He's not great with words, but his, his comedy time is getting really good now. And then you've got Derek Chisora, who's like the last person you want to have a war of words with because he can come out with the most random stuff. Like, yeah. for example, he said to Joey if he was firing blanks because he hasn't got any kids, all that kind of crazy stuff. What, what did you make of that face-off? I did speak to Dev, uh, who, who did the face-off. I said it was one of the better ones I've seen in recent times. I enjoyed it. Yeah, it was enjoyable. And, and Derek made it compelling and watchable, which is what he does. You know, he, he's, a, he's a figure of folklore now. He's a cult figure in British boxing. The O2 Arena is a very good hunting ground for him as well. I know he's lost a couple there, but he's won some dramatic nights. You know, you think about Carlos Takam there, for example. Um, you think about Arthur Spilker, I think. Or was it Spilker? Yeah. Um, you think about some of the contests he's had there, the rumbles he's had there, the rumble with... I think Dillian White was there. One of the Dillian White fights was there. Um, so he likes it. He'll milk the crowd. Um, it, it's always a good crowd at the O2. It's a great venue for boxing. I thought Joe rode that into you very, very well. And he kind of acted like any of us was, would, would do rather. He was quite bemused by it all. Um, Derek decided to go down and question his manhood go down that route of questioning his manhood. But I thought Joe laughed it off very well. Um, didn't get annoyed about it. I think it was good humoured. Derek is a, is, a, is a zany cat at times when he puts that fighting head on, war chisora. Um, but I don't think he's got under Joe's skin. I think Joe's very focused. I've told a couple of people this. I had, John, um, I had um, uh, Johnny Fisher in at Talk Sports in the studio on Saturday night. And he was, and he, Joe is a very good friend of his. They've sparred hundreds of rounds together. And Joe's been working with a sports psychologist. And I like the sound of that because I think he does need to get a bit of spite in his system for his opponents. Um, and I think, I don't think we'll see fireworks from Joe in the build up. He, he's a very contained man. He does all his work in the ring, doesn't crow about his achievements. He's a very modest, bashful, diffident character outside the ring. Um, I don't think Derek, well, I, I could be famous last, uh, famous last words here. I don't think Derek will get under his skin in the next couple of days. And I do see Joe as a favourite. I don't see why people think Derek's going to beat him. What if Derek does pull it off, gets the upset in, like, 
is in most people's eyes. Realistically, who do you think he should, let's just say, hypothetically speaking, he wins by a knockout in the middle rounds. Uh, who would you want to see him fight next? And if he does that? Well, on that card, if Moses Atalma defeats Marius Wack and makes a statement, obviously Wack's 44, 49th fight, he's been in against a who's who of modern heavyweights, lost to most of them, but he's still a very tough guy. Um, Moses 19 against a 44 year old, someone like a Moses Atalmo in a big fight. Um, I don't think it'll happen. Um, I know because I th- do you think Moses wins that handily? No, uh, no, I'm not about Moses and just Chizot. I just can't see the amount of money that Derek would want to fight a young pup. He, he, yeah. I'm assuming Derek wants big names like people. All right, like, all right, let me let me throw a couple of other really realistic. Abio Wardley. I, I was going to say something, a massive curveball. Money, what if they talk to Deontay Wilder back out again? Yeah, Deontay Wilder, maybe. Yeah, that's not a bad shout. But are we going to see Deontay again uh, in the ring? But that's not a bad shout. That's not a bad shout. But it's a one that people will groan over again because they'll say, what's the relevance of that fight? Um, and I think Derek said he'd like one more fight. Maybe it'll be in Saudi Arabia. But, you know, you, you, you can't see him fighting Usyk. Fury, Joshua, Parker again, Dubois can't see, Agit Kabayel be hard work for him. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't, I hope Derek doesn't go on too long, is, is my feeling at the moment. He said he might have two more, get to 50, one more after this. So um, I'm not sure. I, I, I'm really not sure, but, you know, him and Kubrat Pulev was a good fight. Uh, but I, it's very hard to say because I don't want to see Derek go on for too long. I don't really want to see him. You know, he, he's been a great servant to the sport. Um, yeah, that, that, that's that's it for me. I'm, I'm not sure who it should be, the 50th fight. In, I'm not sure he should be fighting, but that's not really my place to say that. In Alexander Usyk's opinion, Derek is the hardest puncher he's fought, and he also said from the English opponents that he's fought, George Joyce was the easiest, and that's from the uh, amateur days. Does that mean anything? Different styles in the amateurs, different length of fight. Um, I think it was a five-round Super Series fight that he had with uh, Joe. Yeah, yeah, I remember it. I do remember it. Um, I'm not sure why he would say Derek Chisora was the hardest puncher. He's had a month uh, saying Derek was the hardest puncher he's faced. Well, maybe I think he's winding people up with that a little bit, maybe. Um, you don't think so? Uh, no, no, from from what I've heard, he's yeah, he's saying he, he definitely is the hardest puncher. That's but, interesting. But, Daniel, but, Daniel Dubois hit him pretty hard. Daniel yeah. Dubois hit him pretty hard that night. Um, well, if you go back to that fight, Derek has all had a very good fight with Usyk for six rounds at least. So, listen, Usyk's entitled to his opinion. Of course he is. He fought the guy. So, you know, respect to him and respect to, to Derek for, for putting him on it, putting it on him that night and landing some big shots. Um, but I, I, I don't think Derek's a bigger puncher than Anthony Joshua. He maybe managed to land the punches more. I don't think he's a bigger puncher than Daniel Dubois, Tyson Fury or um, Anthony Joshua. Fair play. And obviously, you're picking um, Joe to win. Uh, how, how do you think he'll win? Uh, points or late stoppage. Okay. But I swing towards late stoppage. I haven't been around them both yet this week. I want to see how Joe feels and looks. He's not going to change his style at 38 years of age. What he's got to be, though, is he's got to block and be evasive and get his timing right against uh, Derek, who is a very tricky opponent if he's in the mood. Okay, uh, and then on the undercard, a um, couple of fights that stick out. You know, Adam Hamad's opponent got named. He's fighting a guy that's been in with uh, a lot of young prospects. And on on debut, when he fought a guy that you know, um, a lot of people obviously getting bit of criticism for the opponent. Obviously, he had no choice in the opponent, but that's what they picked out. But they've they've given him somebody who's mixed with a lot of young prospects. Uh, a guy that's had uh, twenty six fights, and this will be Adam's second ever fight, amateur or pro. So. Quite a big statement fighting a guy that's had 26 fights. Yeah, I, absolutely. Um, Only been stopped three times in 26 fights as well, this guy that's fighting, Georgie Velikov. 
Uh, we last saw him uh, trying to think of names that he fought on a Frank Warren show. show. He fought Amar Akbar. He got stopped by him. Um, he's fought Zizou as well. He lost to Zizou on points. Uh, lost to Ben Vaughan on points. Um, quite a few British fighters on points. Yeah, and he's he's already had three fights this year as well. Or, or this is his third fight this year. Yeah. Yeah. Look, we you, you yes, okay, it's only Adam Hammond's second fight, but at the same time, um Velishkov um has had twenty six fights and he's lost twenty one of them, remember. Um so you know, he's not a guy that has um looked brilliant you wouldn't expect him to to uh he, look, he's not going to be a world beater you're not going to put adam hammond in with a world beater in his second uh professional fight regardless of the pedigree that he comes from obviously the the son of nasim hammond prince nasim hammond so um look very very early in his career so i expect that against the bulgarian the baby faced bulgarian um who's only 23 He's had a lot of fights going back um, to, I'm just having a look here, to 2021. He's been very, very active. Um, like you say, he's he's lost a lot of his fights, but I expect Adam Hammond will do a number on him. He's very fast. He's very aggressive. Um, and unless the match, I don't know a lot about um, the Bulgarian, but unless they've hugely miscalculated, you can expect uh, Adam Hammond uh to to look very impressive in this contest i really like his confidence i really like the fact he believes he's going to be a world champion in this sport and he's got immense backing and also uh, a following already well i think the fight for me that sticks out the most and i, and I said this to dennis mccann when i met him a few uh, months ago i really rate him for a rematch in baluta a lot of young fighters would be thinking i don't need that fight again and he's literally going back in with Baluta, literally after what, and let me see, he fought him two two fights ago. He had a technical draw with him, which some people thought Baluta might have shaded it. A really hard, tough, tough fight. But for the young guy to literally jump straight in with Baluta again, that's a huge statement for Dennis McCann, would you say? Yeah, yeah, but he's a very talented super bantamweight fighter. Um, He's, he was very disappointed about the clash of heads that night and the cut that stopped the fight. I think it was at the end of the ninth. And um, he did look good in that fight. It was a close fight. Jan Baluta, I think he's having his sixth or seventh fight in a row in the UK. Lost to people like Michael Conlon. Um, again, I think he's Romanian, Baluta. He's he's one of those guys who's got dog in him. Um, but but Dennis is a very skilled boxer. He's just got to not smother his work in this contest. I hear he's very happy up in Liverpool with Joe McNally. I'm expecting a spectacular performance from him, as I am from Moses Atalma against Marius Wack. Stop Marius Wack in four or five rounds. I really think um, the, the young man can do it. And I think Dennis McCann will get a, a solid victory this time. It might have to be on points. It wouldn't surprise me if we got a late stoppage. European Super Bantamweight title, I think it is. Yep, indeed. Um, uh, like I said, all around great card, and I think the fans are in for a bit. It is. It should be entertaining. Uh, Derek's ring walk alone, I think, will be entertaining because it's the last time he's going to do it. So, um, moving on, we, we saw in the last few, in the last week or so, we saw his excellency announce uh, like partnerships with promoters, which kind of threw everyone off. He's announced a partnership with the. Uh, Golden Boy and uh, also with Top Rank, but the Golden Boy is the one I want to talk about because I was at the press conference where you know you was part of uh, a bit of a thing with uh, His Excellency where you guys had a bit of a uh, I don't know if the, the digs the right word, but something about Oscar if you know if he wants to be part of the uh, um, you know the the Riyadh season events, uh, he's going to have to work a bit harder, but he, he's managed to get himself in there. Well, if you remember at the time, I think it was last November or December, and I asked His Excellency at the press conference about um, promoters saying that they weren't going to bring all their big fighters to the events. And he said, Oscar, we will miss you, um, if you recall. That's right. Um, but they've worked away. Look, um, Frank Warren and Eddie Hearn, the, the, the synergy between them working on fights together with the Saudi Arabians has really worked. I don't like people using the term the takeover by His Excellency. 
because it isn't a takeover. He's making everyone cooperate. He's bringing everyone together. He's doing an amazing ambassadorial job in 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 in, in creating diplomacy in boxing. That twelve event deal with top rank to next year with the Riyadh season emblazoned on their events as well, showing a partnership with them. I love that. The fact he's working with Oscar De La Hoya and the week after we've been at the LA event on August the 3rd, they're going to be involved with um, Bohochuk, um, the um, Ukrainian against Virgil Ortiz, the Oscar De La Hoya Golden Boy show, I think is tremendous. Um, Vegas Cosmopolitan, August the 10th, that is. They're going back then to Vegas for that UFC event, Noche, in September. They've got the September event where everyone's working together, September the 21st, that gargantuan event at Wembley. It's brilliant. It, it, we, we should, and, and I think we've seen it, to be fair, the, the, the noise around, the dark noise around Saudi Arabian investment and promotion of events is beginning to dissipate because people realize they're serious they're doing a fantastic job and they're bringing everyone together it's great for the fighters it's great for the promoters and it's great for the sport that's the way i see it what, what does this mean for eddie and frank you know this deal with the top rank and golden boy lab is it different for what, what's happening with them i think so i think so i mean i think we'll learn more next week in los angeles about how the how the landscape will look with the Americans, but obviously we know that the Saudi Arabians are keen to try and help boxing be under one giant umbrella. Um, you know, I mean, I mean, there's obviously a lot of things off the record with His Excellency in press briefings, but they, they've got the right idea about it in my view, that the, the way they've been advised and the way they think about governance of boxing is right. You don't want promoters fractured. You don't want TV stations not working together. Um, it, it, it is really important to try and consume your boxing maybe under one stream, one channel. This all makes sense for the future um, because you know yourself, we watch a lot of boxing. You might be watching it on five, six, seven different platforms. And it is very piecemeal in lots of ways. And to have it all in one place and have everyone working together really does make a lot of sense to me. I mean, if we can get, if Shaka Stevenson does a deal with Javonta Davis and Al Heyman for them to have a fight, I mean, that's the biggest super fight in America right now, in my view. Obviously, the, the Vasyl Lomachenko fight with Tank Davis is now off. Um, Vasyl Lomachenko is going into um, a, a a period of, of abeyance, if you like, in the ring. He's decided not to have the fight with Tank, and certainly till next year. I think Shakur should step up right now. It wouldn't surprise me to see the Saudi Arabians get involved in that one if they really want to. Um, I hope so. I, I really do hope so. Shakur Stevenson's a free agent at the moment. Um, there's lots of knitting together at the moment. I don't see any of it as bad for boxing. It's good for boxing. Indeed it is. And talking of the zone, you said there... So hey he kind of mentioned uh, on twitter the other day about the zone praising the zone how he feels like you know it should be you know he likes the work that they're doing so do you think we're going to see some sort of thing where the zone are going to be the channel that are going to be driven by um the real season basically putting on all their events um because that was quite a random tweet kind of praising the zone for what they do and um obviously sky sports tnt were mentioning that um and also, we saw this thing with, uh, I know Frank's kind of, he's not really spoken about it in detail, but he's pretty much said it's not happening type of thing. Um, what's, you know, is that, could that be linked somewhere? It could be. But, you know, Frank's still got a year's deal with TNT. And I'm going to go with the comments he's made. Obviously, he's got a deal with TNT. He's not going to spit on them right now. It's been a very, very fruitful relationship, not least with Tyson Fury and many other boxers in his stable. There's time to run on that contract still, um, eventually. Um, I think the zone is, is a global service. So that's why His Excellency praises it. They want to do something rounded and global. Um, so that makes sense with the vision. Um, whether everyone will be under the same roof eventually, who knows? 
others might not want to be under the same roof they might want to do their own thing um we shall say that i can't really say how it's going to work for now but it makes sense if they do get under one platform all of them because we know where it is all the big fights can be there the extra pay-per-views can be on there um it makes sense to me but we don't know if that will happen this is boxing anything can happen expect the unexpected but i will say that there it feels like there's a movement within the sport at the moment it's all heading in the right direction uh, and the last question i've got for you gareth did, did you watch uh, frank's interview the other day where you know he was asked about daniel dubois uh, Varda enrollment and uh, he kind of lost it with the reporter at the time you know uh, our friend Eamon at seconds out he uh, uh, you know he, he had the balls to ask that question and uh, he kind of got shut down with regards to uh, you know because Frank to be fair to him he, he doesn't want a narrative being paint, painted out in, in his words when it's not true basically uh, then also you know where does it, why do you think 258 put that tweet out about yeah well like you rightly say you rightly add there that 258 management instead of washing their dirty clothes in public should have been obviously they're, they're wrangling over in the background perhaps over when the VADA testing starts Frank poo pooed it rightly they shouldn't be putting out that kind of thing saying what what it does is it disparages um Daniel Dubois it's it, 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 it's tacitly suggesting he's doing something wrong the kid's never tested for anything. He's clearly, he's at the top of the sport. He has been for a while. Um, I, 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 I thought it was a, um, a, a very badly positioned tweet, if I'm honest. It, it, it was put out there to cause trouble, obviously, because they're not getting their own way in the promotion right now. That, that's what it comes down to. It's the kind of politicking that they should be talking about these things behind the scenes. Um, they're clearly unhappy about something, so they put it out there. Um, and, and you know, rightly, Frank Warren has said, no, it's absolute nonsense. Um, we're still, um, what are we, eight weeks away? I'd be very, very surprised if there isn't VADA testing going into this. Very, very surprised. Frank made the point that, you know, he's had the uh, world title fights back to back and he's been in big fights, so he's always been tested. Um, but you know, you touched on it there. You said you feel like something may not be going their way. Just give the fans a bit of an insight. What kind of things? I'm not saying you know what's not going their way, but what kind of things could be happening that may cause these type of uh, issues? Well, just that he hasn't signed up immediately to it to to the the demands of an Anthony Joshua and his team, and they're they're working their way through it themselves. I mean, there, there's Joshua. I think from memory, if I'm if memory serves me right, I may be wrong on this, but I remember a long time ago I had a chat to Dillian White years ago before he fought Joshua. They might have wanted ten weeks or twelve weeks of VADA testing going into it, and they might have been very unhappy about that. Th this is me. It might be apocryphal this, but um, that they might be asking they might have asked for 10 weeks of VADA testing straight from the press conference and he when we went you know when they were in London uh, when it was launched and announced and they might have said no Dubois team might have said no we're not doing it we're happy to do eight weeks and it'll be around the timings of the testing um because they're trying to suggest that why has Daniel Dubois performances suddenly improved they've improved because the kid's grown up and he's been through something in the ring, um, and he and he's looked spectacular doing it. Um, and and that tweet was casting aspersions. Um, and if I was Frank Warren and Daniel Dubois, I'd be unhappy about it as well. Sound um, right, Gareth. I, I think that's pretty much it, mate. For uh, does that make sense to you? Yeah, yeah. I think that's uh, quite a fair statement. But obviously, no one's said anything from two five eight. So hopefully. We can get some word from them at some point. No, it's what they're not saying. It's what they're not saying. That's what that tweet was. Yeah. You know, it, it, I don't know. It, 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 I got, I got, I got why Frank Warren responded um, kind of aggressively in, in in being asked about it. We'll be with them all tomorrow. We can ask all these questions. Indeed, we can. Uh, Gareth, that's pretty much it. Um, thank you so much for your time. I know it's a late one, so I appreciate you coming on. Um, so yeah. 
and hopefully catch you soon. Yeah, lovely. Great to see you. Thank you.